Wexford Youth Theatre put together a play called Our Land. Much of the 1798 rebellion took place in Wexford. Our history books are full of the battles which took place between the United Irish Men and the Crown Forces. But how did the rebellion affect the lives of ordinary people at the time? John was away, Caroline and Jennifer shelter in a doorway. A figure scurries past with her hood up. Anne, ah, is that you? Wexford Youth Theatre has recently performed a drama called Our Land, written by local author Nikki Rossiter. What's happening is the people down below are, are being converted to Catholicism. The production is based on the diary of a young Protestant girl who was living in Wexford at the time of the 1798 rebellion. Talk to the priest and see what's going on. Alice, Elizabeth, August James, August for Hishmahori Boss, August Toshi Digoni, Ilak Gorman, Ishak Dead Noka Hucked, August Fuentua, Chaka Ord, August Sam. Toshi Pradstunik, August Marsoldit, Fialon, Triglod, Ilak Gorman, Egan, Eom Shin, Leshne, Pradstunik, August Nehernik. How many do you see here? Two, ma'am. Well, then, it's just tea for two. Alice? Well, that's just a typically stupid question. I, I just thought maybe Mr. James might be joining you. You thought? Alice, please. That'll be all me. Fialon, Olis Egan, Fuene. Little Miss Alice, I suppose. Who else? She was born in the wrong century. She thinks we're still peasants. Look at Tom Payne. Listen up, lad. We are peasants. No, miss, we are not. Times are changing. Look around you. What do you see changing? The whole world is changing. America showed the way, then France. Far away places, fancy ideas. Our chance is coming. The United Irish men will bring a better life. Everyone will be equal then. I believe it when I see it. Well, you will see it. Change will come. Oh yeah, things will change. The world will turn on its head. Things will be great, but I'll still be making the tea and they'll be drinking it. Well, you're at it. Make me a cup as well, will you? And when we're all equal, will you make me a cup? I do wish you'd show more kindness with the servant. So, I'm Tidal Irelander, August Hockey Nicky, and Tidal Show, more Cap Nepadstuni, Grev, Air, Dareland, August Cap New Hair, Nick Grevshay, Dareland, Freshen. You're, you're too easy altogether with them. How silly to be letting them have tea. Just because we're having some? Courtesy costs nothing. Tea does. Do you think if I didn't offer it, they wouldn't make an extra pot anyway? You mean, they steal our tea? It's not stealing, really. They should be punished, not rewarded with cups of our tea. They'll just start getting notions about themselves. What do you mean, getting notions about themselves? Like the American colonists or the French rabble. We are all Irish people living together. And what of these united Irishmen? They only want equality and freedom. Yes, equality and freedom for them. But where does that leave us? It leaves us just where we are. Do you think that men like Tone or Grogan or the other landowners are organising to deprive themselves of their way of life? We can't all be winners if the order changes. Great stuff there from the Wexford Youth Theatre. But right now, I'm here with Dr. Kevin Whelan, a professor in history, and very importantly, a Wexford man. Kevin, you're very welcome. Thank you, Sinead. Now tell me, why is 1798 so important? Well, it was this effort to bring the democratic freedoms and equalities into uh, Ireland on the model uh, of the French Revolution and the American Revolution. The difference was that in Ireland, unlike France and America, that revolution was not successful. It was brutally uh, suppressed in 1798. And in some senses, the long-term consequences of that was that Irish politics split into what we would now call unionism and nationalism. And that now with the peace process and so on, we're trying to bring those traditions back together again. 1798 is the moment at which the split. So to understand even modern politics, we have to understand what happened 200 years ago in 1798. And this was something which involved the loss of 30,000 lives, more than were lost, for example, during the main phase of the French Revolution. So this is something which is of mega scale, even in European terms. 
Does it ever surprise you that it takes a centenary or for it to be 200 years since 1798 before those 30,000 deaths are really remembered? all across Ireland? No, because I would say like in my own county of Wexford, the, the men of, and women of 98 have never really been forgotten, but obviously you get a, a much more intense spotlight during a, a bicentenary year, and, and this has been a, a wonderful year of commemoration and of memory, uh, particularly in Wexford, Wicklow, uh, Kildare, Carlow, but also in places like Bantry Bay in Cork and Killal in Castlebar in Mayo and indeed also in Belfast and in Antrim and Down and across the north so that there's been a, a great refocusing of, of interest in 1798 this year and many wonderful uh, events have been uh, put on including that uh, play Our Land in Wexford. Okay well let's take another look at that play Our Land. Here we go from the Wexford Youth Theatre. Mary what news of the town? Ladies I'm sorry to be the bearer of such sad news but the government troops have abandoned the town. The cowards! They feared for their lives, so great is the rebel force. Many of the soldiers have families with them, and they took to the boats. What is to happen? The rebels have the town. They are putting green flags and bells everywhere. They are said to have declared Ireland a republic. Ireland is no republic. We are loyal subjects of the king. What can we do now? There are rumours. Go on, Mary. There are rumours that every Protestant remaining in their republic is to be slain. When it came up first about a play about 1798, everyone was like, oh, you know, boring, you know, so um, we did, Vic Murrayman was our director, which was brilliant, he was great, and um, he got us into it. We started off doing like workshops and everything, and, and he was bringing us back to 1798, and you see the ordinary people lived so differently. You know, you never hear about that at all. You hear about Father Murphy and Vinegar Hill, like, you don't hear about the ordinary people and how they were affected. But um, it was hard at first, but um, when we got into it, it was fine. Over time, over the rehearsal process, uh, the young people did actually deepen their understanding of, of 1798, of that period, of the history of the town. And I think also their understanding of the art form itself and the relationship between a set script, if you like, and an improvisational process, that sort of gap where the creativity takes place. One of the major issues explored in the drama was the pressure put on Protestant families to convert to Catholicism. You treated us well when in your service, and I do not wish to do any harm, but all of your religion are in great danger. But we have protection. That paper is useless. Only those who convert will survive. Never. Do not be so stubborn. If you do not consent, you will die. You must convert, and we will all survive this day. I hold my faith in conviction. Don't be so stubborn. I'd rather die than deny my religion. Oh, you're a fool. Jennifer is right. Let us go. Caroline, at least come with us. Talk to the priest. I may speak to him, but he will not change either my mind or my faith. She was very nervous about what was going on. Um, she... She wanted to do the best thing for herself and her family, um, which was to convert. Um, but her sister was too stuck in her ways, really, to do that. So she was trying to, you know, change her mind. In the course of their work with the script, the cast were encouraged to add some thoughts of their own regarding what might have happened in 1798. The key scenes would be what we'd call the crowd scenes. Um, the moment where the trial takes place in the bull ring. Um, strangely enough, we began to explore that idea of a trial and a revolutionary court based on a kind of intuition we had about a relationship between 1798 and the French Revolution. Afterwards, I discovered in an article by Kevin Whelan that such an event actually took place. So I'm still trying to figure out the meaning of that, but it's quite exciting and I think it probably points to the fact that art can help us and cultural production can help us to understand historical events in particular ways. Soldier, you were charged with causing the deaths of numerous sons of this town. Speak your piece. I was acting under orders. I had to stop the fighting. It was your people who were starting the trouble. You took the king's shitting. I joined up to fight the French. But you killed the Irish. But I am Irish. So your sin is greater. Citizens of the assembly, what say you? Who calls mercy? Death. Well, Kevin, the, the whole idea of freedom and equality is very, it's, it, we all know about it now and it's kind of in our, in our lives and in our lingo, but in 1798 it would have been something new. 
Yes, indeed. And it, it was something entirely revolutionary. It was, as the, the actor said there, about the world turned upside down. Those who were on the bottom kind of getting a leg up the, uh, the ladder and the kind of artificial barriers that were placed to people in terms of what class they were born into, what religion you were born into, that these barriers would be swept away and that you would have a kind of a, a democracy of talent, that those who had skills and ability would rise to the top rather than those who were just born into aristocratic or gentry families. And of course that was a deeply powerful and deeply disturbing idea in terms of the 18th century where everybody had their place and was meant to stay in it. But in some senses 1798 is the beginnings of the democratic tradition in Ireland and the kind of democratic freedoms that we now take uh, for granted uh, 200 years later. But that's why we remember them in this bicentenary year, that their sacrifice, and as I said, 30,000 people were killed in 1798, that people had to die so that we could achieve the freedoms that we now have. And that's why it's appropriate to remember them. Yeah, we saw, we saw that young girl in uh, our land saying, we're equal now, you make me the cup of tea. I mean, is that realistic? Did it affect women's, women's lives as well in a yes, big way? Yes, because it began with The Rights of Man, the famous book by Thomas Paine, but that was mm. immediately answered by Mary Wollstonecraft, the English woman who had strong Irish connections with the rights of women, arguing that this whole thing was a nonsense about democracy and so on if it excluded 50% of the population. Now, in the context of the 18th century, it wasn't possible for women's rights to be brought fully onto the agenda, but certainly the 1790s is the generation where Irish women begin to get actively involved in politics and there's wonderful women from this period like Mary Wollstonecraft, Mary Ann McCracken in uh, Belfast, uh, Martha McTeer in Belfast, Mrs Oliver Bond in Dublin who are, are say the first generation of politicised uh, women and in some senses almost the founders of the modern uh, feminist tradition in Ireland as well. Great Kevin, thanks a million, lots of food for thought, it's, it's true that there's a great value in studying history. Thank you very much for coming You're in. welcome Sinead. Thank, Thank you Kevin. You. And now over to Porek. OK, that's it. Thanks very much to Kevin and the Wexford Youth Theatre and Liam for helping us with today's show. Yes, Tom and Blonnet will be with you tomorrow with the comedian Gary Cook and the girl band, band Adriana. That's a great name.